The Virtue V10 is a seriously interesting boat. Take a look at it, and with that plumb bow and those rake lines, with that T-top and the walk-around configuration inside, not to mention those outboard engines, twin 250s, you would swear it was part of that kind of fast Nordic weekender market occupied by the likes of Saxdor and Axapar. In fact, we've got a Rick, a Rick 280 sitting over here. That's a very nice boat. You could see the aesthetic similarities. You could see why people might look at this and immediately think, well, it's part of that market. But they're trying to differentiate it in several key ways. start they tell me the build quality is excellent. Now, this is a Polish company and they build their boats in Poland, they build them they say to a very high standard, vinyl ester resins, vacuum infusion and another key element of this uh, boat is the hull. Now what they have here is the peat step hull. Now, I first saw this at its original launch when it was used for a Yammerin sports cruiser more than a decade ago and the key principle, although this hull has changed over the years, has remained pretty much the same. If I come under here and look at these spray rails, you'll see that in place of regular spray rails, which involve relatively flat surfaces that fling the water sideways, these are much more angled and aggressive. They come down from the hull, so they aim to fire the water downwards and aft. And the principle there is that in doing so, they increase the pressure beneath the planing surfaces, so that when you come down on re-entry off a wave, you're kind of cushioned, you get a softer ride, you get a quieter ride, and according to the guys here, you also get a more efficient ride. Now quite what the uh, twin hull steps will do to that high pressure zone when they introduce extra air to the planing surface, I'm not sure. And we don't have a chance to take it out here at the Palmer Boat Show. So it'll have to remain an unanswered question for the time being. But rest assured, we have an invitation to go down to Marbella to test this boat out. So we'll certainly do that at the very first opportunity. Now if we step on board, you'll see we have a pair of Honda 250s here. They'll apparently be uh, good to take this boat to around about 50 knots. But you can also have this with a single rig, 250 to 300. Uh, and you can also have it, in fact, with a pair of Evoy Norwegian electric outboards. I'll just step up onto this seat and take a look onto this hardtop. It's a fairly expansive hardtop, so you can fit some decent solar panels on there and run those outboards entirely from that if you want an environmentally friendly boat. And certainly, they seem to think it does very good business in the uh, inland waterways of Europe, on the lakes, where internal combustion is very much frowned upon. In terms of the quality they're talking about, well, that's also pretty quickly evident. Simple things like sunken cleats to avoid trip hazards, a little bit more expensive, but very welcome. And then as we move forward, as standard, we get a pair of drop-down bulwarks, one on either side, to expand this central cockpit. Between those, very much in the conventional fashion, is a dinette for up to eight people, which is the uh, entire ship's company in this case, facing each other across this central table. But you can, of course, drop that table into that space and use infills to create a sunbed. You can also drop this aft backrest down to expand that sunbed, and you can also <laughs> drop this forward backrest down to expand it even more. So this entire section is a huge sunbed for four, five, six people without actually getting in the way of your side decks. Further forward, taking great care to notice these swanky little bits of carbon fibre trim, we see the transverse wet bar and it's a pretty generous one. The trio of cup holders on either side and a central lid which reveals, well, not a lot, frankly, on the showboat, just a sink. But you can, of course, spec this with a uh, griddle. And down below, we have a pair of fridge freezers, one on either side, plus some useful storage in the centre. Moving forward up onto that bow, you'll see there's a little step to take you up there, which, of course, is to generate a little bit of extra volume down below. And we'll see how that impacts on it in a moment. But when you step up onto there, you'll see that the uh, hardtop grab rail does get slightly in the way. I've cracked my head a couple of times on there and I reckon given it comes halfway up my face, even if you're five foot six, you've got to be a bit wary of it. But happily, 
on the gunnel top, we also have this grab rail that continues all the way to the fore peak, where you'll see we have the flag on the anchor locker for the show. So I can't remove that. What I can do though is tell you that in tandem with most boats in this kind of sector, or really I should say in this kind of style with that elegant plum bow, it uses a kind of Pardo style anchoring system, whereby you hit a button at the helm, the stem opens up, the anchor protrudes out and drops down without damaging your fiberglass. Now behind me, again, pretty much as you would expect of a walk around boat like this, we have a sunbed for two, each with a cup holder. And in a rather nice twist, I enjoy the simplicity of this, you can simply grab hold of this part of the sunbed, the leading edge, yank it and that uh, headrest drops down and you buy yourself an extra six inches or so to relax. So that's a rather nice touch. Now let's make our way back down the starboard side. You'll see there are the water and uh, waste points there. I prefer to see those on the gunnel just to make them more accessible, get them off the deck and out of the way. And we find ourselves back down in the cockpit and at the helm. Now the helm itself is quite high spec too. If I rotate and drop down, you'll see that each of these seats uses impact mitigation to give you genuine comfort underway. And that, I believe, is a standard. They also come with bolsters and these lateral wings to keep you in place. And there's a nice foot brace down below if I put myself in position. And good visibility all round. I don't know whether this is strictly necessary, but it's rather a lovely feature. It feels kind of uh, Formula One influenced, a nice tapered piece of carbon fiber. It's a beautiful way to do a stanchion. We have a pair of 12 inches here. We have uh, a non-adjustable wheel in this case. Um, and we have plenty more carbon fiber detailing. What I don't like, uh, and what I never really like, is the fact that the uh, tabs are located on the uh, port side away from your throttle hand. So I'd certainly change that but it does feel like a, a very seriously well-equipped and workmanlike performance boat helm station. It does everything you need, but I would also probably, I have to say, be a traditionalist and spec a compass on the dash top. Now let's pop down below and see how things are down there. Now I'm afraid the lights aren't working at the moment, so we can't investigate it in dazzling light, but what we can do you see that the bed is a good size. It takes full advantage of the sunbed on that foredeck for decent headroom. There's not enough there to sit up in bed, I don't think, and read. But given the natural trim of this boat, I think your head would be at this, uh, this high end anyway, further aft. There are no uh, additional bits and bobs here, like reading lights or charging points, which I'm a little bit surprised by. And while once they fitted this out with uh, authentic timber, proper oak. They seem to find that uh, the colour variations of natural timber sometimes disappointed their customers. So what they've got here is a, uh, an oak veneer on ply. Let's open up this starboard heads compartment. And I call it heads compartment advisedly because as things stand, there's no, sh no uh, shower fitting in here. But there is an option for it. So you can turn this into a proper wet room. And there's a good size of opening porthole to get rid of your steam too. It's not huge, but it's perfectly decent. At this stage then, it appears to me that what we have here in the form of the Virtue V10 is a good fun day boat, pretty much in the style of the Nordic Weekender, the sector it claims not to be a part of. I mean, after all, the aesthetic is very similar and the arrangement is too, with the walk around layout, with that after net, with that transverse wet bar, the two man helm, with the fore deck uh, sunbed, with the option of the T-top or not, with the outboard engines. It's all stuff we've seen before in various guises and that's no bad thing. So the place I think this boat stands to differentiate itself is in the finer detailing, like the carbon fibre that we've pointed out around the boat. Um, in the lead times, apparently if you order this boat today, it could be yours within six weeks to your spec. And also in that peat step hull, they're making some very powerful claims in relation to the performance, the dynamics and the handling of this boat. We can't verify that either way because we're locked into the Palmer Boat Show and we can't get it out on the water. 
But rest assured, we're booked in to go down to Marbella so we can get it on the water, give it a proper concerted sea trial, find out how it is, and we'll bring you the findings of that very soon. Thank you.